Hey everybody, welcome to Brickfall, my name is Jack. Today is another weekly update for the coolest custom creations that people happen to be making out of LEGO this week. This is a top 10 list of sorts. I'm not presenting them in numbers like 9, 10, 8, 7, 6, all the way down to my favorite. I'm gonna kind of show them off and point out the things about the builds that I just really liked and why I liked them more than some of the other things I happen to see throughout the week. So just to preface, this is totally my opinion. Feel free to agree, disagree, and heck, if you think I missed something awesome, you can leave a link for it in the video description below. Speaking of which, if you wanna show your creation, I've left an email and a description on how you should submit it in in the description as well. So anyways, let's start off with this one. It's called Warcraft Monopool by Paul Track. Now this is a build based on a scene from a video game, or at least based on a scene from within the universe of a uh, computer game, Warcraft. And though I never played it, I don't think that is at all necessary to appreciate how awesome this looks. Number one, uh, the inclusion of the lights in the monopole in the center really, really like brings out a great sort of glowing aura, magical vibe. I mean, it is a monopole after all. And on top of this whole area uh, looking very ornate and regal and just like big, strong architecture that uh, make up this curving wall, I think one of the strongest building points is uh, the actual floor tiling at the bottom. Those are a bunch of sloping bricks that are on their sides, and there's, uh, I think, some tile pieces thrown in there as well. And I don't know, I just really like this technique, and I love how the flat edges of the lines of all those bricks that are sloped on their side seem to match up just right with the border on the outside. Now this next build, or set of builds, really is uh, called Alice in Wonderland Characters by Julius Von Brunk, showing off a lot of the uh, card guys. And there's something sort of eerie about their simplicity and their posability. These characters look very animated, and I think sort of the odd kind of drama that the Alice in Wonderland universe uh, creates is captured very well within these builds. There's actually a lot more of these characters on the Flickr feed, but I'm showing off the card guys because they're kind of the coolest, I think. But if uh, you really want the mushrooms to turn on you, let's take a look at Alice. Yeah, honestly, things get even weirder if you check out the Flickr. Now here is an interesting build. This is Miller's Courthouse by Mark Hodgson. What's interesting about the images of this particular set is that this builder tried to make these buildings look exactly like they should have looked back in 1888, and he's recreating a scene from one of the murders of Jack the Ripper. So a bit creepy, a bit scary. Often when a historical setting is recreated in Lego, it's very much about the history, and sometimes the detailing of the Lego building gets overlooked. But here I think a lot of the atmosphere was properly captured. Things look kind of bleak in the alleyway, it's very open, and even the photography is shot in a kind of claustrophobic or silhouetted style right there. I really like that. And yeah, there's just a different feel about the whole thing, and it really stuck out to me for this week. Now, this next one might look like a race car from the future, but it in fact is a blast from the past. It is the Lotus 72D by Zippar. This was a Formula One car built back in the early 1970s by Lotus, and it obviously has all the sort of distinctive features that makes a Formula One a Formula One, but both the uh, detailing in terms of uh, the paneling on the outside and just the shape of the nose and the intakes really does make it look like it is from uh, another decade, like the 70s and also that curved bit on the tail and our massive intake on the top, you really can see sort of how that decade's style really influenced the shape of this race car. And I guess I put this thing on the list because not only is the build wonderful, but kudos for picking just such a cool and unique race car. I don't know if I would have known about this car if I hadn't seen the Lego build. Now this isn't the first time we've featured custom build for LEGO shoes, and it probably won't be the last. These are Nike Dunks by A.A. Ron Newman. Now for the life of me, I'm not going to understand sort of the fascination with uh, people and their collecting of basketball shoes and sneakers and stuff like that. I mean, no judgments, I collect LEGO minifigures after all, we all have our thing. But what I like about this is that there's just, it's just such a good shape at such a small size, and there's just like nice details and the colors look good, everything's proportional, and Heck, they even put detailing on the bottom. In LEGO, you really can create anything that you like, anything that interests you, and we just never get uh, these kinds of builds very often. And it's just wonderful to see it done in such a, such a good way. 
All right, now here is something that I'm really excited about, especially because recently we have been ordering a lot of Harry Potter minifigs for some collections in the near future. But these are the four Hogwarts common rooms by Potter Brick, appropriately so. And I just love that these are just kind of the perfect display models. First one we're looking at here is Ravenclaw. And uh, the interior, I think, is actually based on how it was described or shown in the films. We've got the ghost and the uh, head teacher that runs the house, plus some of the main characters. You might recognize a few of them. And that is the case for all of these builds. It's so cool. You can just put them all up. I really do wish I had these displays. I just feel like as a longtime fan and just a good way to actually show your appreciation, there's just enough nice details in each of the houses that really shows off a sort of like the knowledge of uh, of the series and just some of the nice interesting details they really all do feel like complete atmospheres and uh yeah just uh look out for those uh, harry potter collection videos coming up in the future this next build is from David Hughes. I don't know if you've heard of him or not. It's called Afternoon of a Fawn, which is uh, actually the name of a ballet that was first produced and performed back in 1912, but I'm sure you all knew that. Anyways, the build for these two dancers just captures such an energy and, a, and sort of a nice delicate balance. But anyways, this is just sort of another stunning example of what can be achieved with just the brick, the Lego brick. We are constantly getting new parts and new pieces that will allow different kinds of connections and allow us to make builds in ways that we couldn't before. But with a truly artistic mind and a very good head for uh, how to engineer these sorts of builds, incredible pieces can still be formed just from the blocks. This is a government building by Magnus the Great. It's built in micro scale and would fit perfectly into our Micropolis city that we have at Brick Vault. But I think the true achievement of the build is sort of the brutal style of architecture that's captured for this government building in so few parts. This is just one simple picture of a very awesome build. I'm not going to show the video because this is a JK Brickworks build and he did a great video, not just showcasing what the function is, but how the function works. I highly suggest you check it out and I have a feeling you might be able to guess what this uh, motorized function for this Mario build can do. Now before I show off the last build, the 10th one that I liked from the week, let's see some of the fan mocks. All right, and this is the first time I've ever shown uh, fan pictures. There's just been so many coming in over the last several months, and uh, I figured a lot of you guys just really feel like sharing and showing off your cool custom creations. So this is uh, the first time around. I hope you guys enjoy it. I've left links in the description on what email to send that to if you do want to send in your own pictures for next Sunday. But ultimately, I hope this uh, helps promote you guys um, supporting each other and your builds. There's a lot of different ages and skill levels for all kinds of builders, but uh, the bottom line, is I hope this inspires some people to do some Lego building, whether it's working on a new project or perhaps finishing off an old one that uh, you got stumped on. For the 10th and final build uh, for this cool custom creation segment episode, uh, you might be able to guess the theme for it. We've got a nice, big, fat, jolly Santa Claus. Great detailed Lego built figure. There's even a hatch on the inside with a smaller Santa Claus sitting at a fire. In fact, I think that is one of the promotional sets that came out not too long ago, or at least was inspired from it. That's an awesome little technique to show the belt buckle in the center. Showing expressions on a Lego built figure is not an easy feat, but he certainly does look like a happy camper if nothing else. And the display stand that he rests on is nice, it's complete. This is a great thing to have around the house, especially during the holiday season, of course. You can bet next Sunday, right on Christmas Day, we're probably going to have a few more Christmas themed builds. And all right, I think with that, this marks the end of uh, the episode. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Remember to check out the Flickr accounts of the builders that uh, were in this episode. And also, if you do want to submit your own creation, I have left links in the video description below. So once again, this was Brick Vault. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time. Yeah.